So, so welcome to my talk. I'm going to talk, do you hear me in the back? Yeah? So before everything, please forgive me, I am French. <laughs> so if there is something you don't understand, you are probably not alone, so tell me. So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, Gaillon D39 uh, uh, statute. Uh, so uh, after a short, introdu a short introduction, uh, we think that we can integrate well into wine contrary to what Stefan said a few hours ago. And I'm going to talk about uh, some internals and some performance comparisons and our plan. So why do we want D39 support uh, natively in the Mesa driver? Well, basically a hell lot of games are supporting D39. So, so as you see, even today, <coughs> We have a lot of D3D games that still support this API. And uh, the first game on using D3D that was using D3D11 and not D3D9 and didn't have any D3D9 support was two years ago. So that, that means that if we can have a very fast and working, uh, and working path for all these games there, then we can be quite happy. Uh, so yes. We have Steam on Linux, so it's, uh, I think it's very really cool, uh, a revolution for the Linux desktop. But obviously there, there are some very old games that you love to play them and you would like to play them again at in very good conditions. And so that's why you, you need some D3D9 support on Linux. So yes, there is Wine support, but we can get even better with Gaion 9 for Mesa drivers. And Yes, let's wait for this slide. So the project uh, was started about four years ago by Joachim Kinnock. And so he did that to understand how GPU were working and he didn't thought that he it would go that far. And um, in 2013, Christoph Bundler uh, wanted to, to have StarCraft 2 and were working very well on on his driver, so he's starting to invest a lot of time to make it work uh, much better. And so it's at that time that it began uh, quite uh, well working. And so he proposed uh, it to be merged in Mesa, but it wasn't integrated right away. And uh, it was integrated uh, about three, four months ago uh, into Mesa. So how does it work exactly? So first I have to remind how uh, Mesa drivers work. So here uh, we have some Gaian drivers that implement uh, Gaian API and implement uh, the TGSI uh, shadow language. And basically, uh, state trackers use this API to do everything. Uh, so this API is quite simple, uh, do a copy with uh, how to do it, etc. Et and Mesa, I, Mesa is talking to uh, these drivers with Gaion, and Gaion 9 is using directly this API to talk to Gaion drivers. Whereas uh, the OpenGL uh, entry point is in Mesa core, is not directly uh, a, Mesa, a Gaion state tracker. So here we have all the uh, verification work, uh, EGL, GLX, and it talks to the GRI drivers like the Intel driver are very old Nuvo and Razor drivers. And it talks to the Mesa state tracker that talks to Gaion. So here we have one layer less than OpenGL since we, we don't have that, that uh, section. And compared to Wine that has another layer, uh, that means two layers less. So hopefully better fit you overhead especially si since here we can do a lot of assumptions on what works, what won't work, so we have much less tweaking to do. And so how it is in Wine? Uh, basically when you play a, a game in Wine, uh, all, uh, all Windows GLS are implemented by Wine developers, by GLS uh, created by Wine, and uh, we, we have a D3D9 uh, DLL that talks to uh, Wine D3D that talks to OpenGL. 
And what we do uh, is to, when the application connects to this DLA, we say, hey, why not switch line instead if, if, the, if the user asks for it? Uh, and uh, one code uh, for nine is talking to the X server directly and linked to guide nine. Uh, so why the X server? Uh, we'll see later, but anyway, it can work on Wayland with uh, Xcolon, and uh, the infrastructure can be ported to Wayland directly, but I don't expect any big improvement. And we could do slightly differently, as showed by the one staging, wine staging developers. They say that we could, instead of uh, having calling this DLA to move here, we could have our, our own D3 D9 DLA that doesn't rely at all on why Wine API, and and that would rely only on uh, win Windows API, so that we would talk to Wine DLA, but with a strict API. So now a bit more about Wine integration. Uh, so first, Gaion Nine, as you have noticed, is limited in its support to uh, graphic card. So we don't have uh, NVIDIA driver support, but some people come on our channel, I have NVIDIA driver, it doesn't work, why? So, well, you, you, you could have something similar in NVIDIA proprietary driver, but I don't see why not. And uh, so yes, it's Gaion only, so since Intel developers didn't like Gaion, uh, we, we don't have good support for Intel, there is the ELO drivers, uh, but it doesn't work at all. Uh, a very, very simple example app, it will work, but no, no game to work. And <laughs> so how a Wine and Gaion 9 link together? So here we have the DLL that is in Wine that uh, manages the API to create a D3D9 instance and then uh, opens Gaion 9 and <coughs> helps uh, create the device uh, D3D9 uh, instance, and this instance is used by the uh, application to do all the rendering, to procreation, so all this work is done in Gaion 9, and what is done in Wine is uh, all the window handling and uh, the implementation of this interface that is used to get what the device is supporting. And so we have two, two communications, so to implement this, uh, Wine is talking to Gaion 9, and Gaion 9 to implement the presentation is using this Wine interface to do the presentation. Uh, also, uh, we could do differently. We could have all the uh, Windows system code in Mesa, but uh, have code that can only be compiled with Wine uh, compiler. Uh, it's another solution that was initially taken for the D3D11 uh, state tracker that was dropped uh, a few years ago. Um, where was I? Where did I? Uh, we can have uh, D3D9 support without Wine. Uh, so we have wo uh, a demo for that uh, called X9 that basically you implement all the Windows system bits that you need that is in Wine and you go to the Gaion 9 directly. So you can have access to the API uh, by in this implementation without Wine. So now a bit more about Windows systems. So what we wanted uh, for D3D9 is to have client-side buffer allocation, uh, good multi-GP laptop support, which unfortunately didn't work very well on OpenGL and Mesa and Fedora and have the closest behavior to what is expected. So to do that, we, we choose to do with something quite recent, uh, GRI 2 and present. Present enables to tell I have a, a pitch map. Uh, I want it to be presented there at this offset at this time. So it's pretty handy and can be used outside of NVGL. Um, and GR 3 is uh, basically, I have a buffer uh, can you make a pitch map out of it? So they have to believe in code execution. You, you have a buffer, you transform into pitch map and you present it. And uh, since uh, derive three, uh, the, 
some bugs in this patch. So uh, now distributions are, are not having a, a good support for heat and it's visible in a lot of situations. Uh, so we implemented a callback with the right key that basically imports the buffer and copies it to the pitch map. So it's one copy more, but it works. So now, um, district denying contrary to OpenGL um, on the presentation slightly differently. Uh, it has a run the ahead call. So for example, if you are a video player, you say, I want 10 back buffers and I want one back buffer to be displayed every two uh, videos. And so it is possible with district denying. It's not possible with, uh, well, it is possible, but not straightforward with OpenGL. Uh, for example, uh, a district denying app uh, with uh, with uh, Descent can ask to have two back buffers, and um, and it will expect that uh, it will present them early and have uh, some s something very smooth. Um, uh, so when you have uh, these things on, every frame is going to be presented, whereas uh, on an open GM implementation, depending on which implementation, you are going to get triple triple buffering. That means that if you are presenting 10 frames in one uh, day block, it's going to display only one and drop all the other ones. So it's better for speed, but District 9 is not like that. Uh, all frames are going to be presented. So that's something that with the present extension, we are able to implement uh, precisely. So I'm sorry, I really didn't know. So now multi GPU support. So with Musa OpenGL, you can get uh, uh, optimus like support with precising which GPU you want to run on your, your application. It needs some setup before. And so it, it's pretty cool, it works, but not perfectly. Uh, so a, a short reminder on how it is supposed to work. So the GRI uh, API are used to get usually uh, access to the device to get, um, you contribute anything if you are not allowed to uh, use the device. And so in the right to, to get access to the secondary device, there were some special flags and handy in the X server to give you access to it. But now we can just use run the node. And um, since the graphic card uh, don't hold the same tiling mode, uh, so uh, tiling is the way to order the pixels in a buffer for better performance. And usually they are different depending on the graphic card. So what we have to do is to use a buffer without tiling to talk to each other. So that means one copy. And uh, in the right to the copy is on the X server, whereas for the right to um, it is done client side and the server doesn't know anything about uh, the right client. So I must say I'm a bit sorry because uh, I'm, I have written the derived to derive plan support and at that time it was working better than now. Now it's pretty ugly with paint, unfortunately. So uh, the enable functions are now supported by Radeon and, uh, and Nuvo uh, in the kernel, but not yet by Intel. That, mean that means that if you ask Intel to make AMD cards, uh, you don't have any synchronization between reads and writes from the cards. And in the problem is when you send a buffer and that you have not finished rendering to it, you we e I expected that the enable functions will be ready soon and that the Intel card would, wa would wait before reading uh, the buffer that the IMD card would have finished rendering, but uh, it's still not done and we have triangle shaped string, unfortunately, that's pretty ugly. So. I'm happy to know that the Intel uh, support is coming. I heard that yesterday. And so that's what I was saying. Uh, yes, so GRI2 doesn't have the uh, triangle shaped string problem uh, because uh, the copy is done slightly differently. differently. So uh, first it's done always on, the, on one buffer. I, it uses only one buffer for the communication. So you always have two links because you overwrite every time the buffer. Uh, whereas for derive two, you use, uh, as it should be done, several buffers and you send one while you write to another one. 
but uh, because of mission synchronization, you can get uh, shown a frame before it is rendered. So you have a frame very old that is rendered. So it's the frames are not straightforward. Which are not so that's not very good. So for Git Redo 9, uh, uh, actually, uh, that's the time when I, I came in the project. Uh, I wanted to internally derive time for support for this project to, 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 made to be able to use it and try if it was worth it. And so instead of expecting synchronization done in the kernel, which, which should be done, but which means that the Intel driver would have to wait the AMD driver to finish handling. So it means that the Intel can't do anything. So whereas it could do other things, so it, it's probably better that we do synchronization client side. And so we have a, a optional parameter to try this out. Uh, what we do uh, is we use another thread uh, where it will wait the rendering is finished and then it will present, uh, present. So basically it's doing the, the synchronization client side. So I, it has the same performance, but it works perfectly. So if you have such a system, try this parameter out and if it works for everyone, we will make it default. So, uh, so I'm switched to totally different topic. Uh, just to remind that we sometimes we need a top three uh, even without a multi GPU system. For example, when we, you want to a multi sample buffer, you have to copy it to a single sample buffer. So uh, now something yet different uh, like that I, I wanted to mention is about fault faulting. Um, it's about lag control. So basically, when you run the very fast and the CPU is, is sending very fast command, and sometimes the GPU is just too slow and can't keep up. And so the rendering curve gets longer and longer and you get lag. And to prevent that, uh, what we've done is that when you are too early, when you have submitted too, too many things, you wait. So it's done at presentation time. So uh, for Mesa drivers, uh, you usually would uh, two buffers. So if you have two buffers that are not finished rendering, then you wait. And it prevents on la uh, lag. So if you want to, to play and see what's the impact of uh, faulting uh, on lag, you, you can play with Galen line. We have a, a parameter for that, total value, which by default is the three. And if you put zero, you have equivalent to GL finish. So uh, no lag at all, but close. And if you put uh, minus one, uh, you don't do faulting and you can see how you, your apps will suffer. So now a bit about internals and why uh, Git Redo 9 in Galleon is easy. So here how rendering works uh, for an application in Git Redo 9 but in other API too. So basically it sets some rendering state. So rendering state is how to, to interpret uh, um, um, textures, how to um, do the rasterizing. So uh, there is a lot of rendering state, um, sampler state, texture state, etc. So applications set them uh, to the correct value uh, for their rendering. They update the vertex buffer that says where uh, the rendering should occur and they d define which vertex and pixel shader uh, should be used. They update shader constant that are used by the shader, and then they don't. And they do that uh, hundreds of times uh, to their pain. So good applications uh, do that in an optimized way. Basically, uh, you have jet buffering. Uh, so application will order the draw code so that what is in front will happen first. So uh, when you draw what is behind, uh, the graphic card will know that it doesn't need to render because it's OK with it. And uh, unfortunately, uh, some games don't do that. And good, at good applications also uh, choose in which order it's going to happen to minimize all the state changes. And so all the CPU overhead that we talked about mountain, uh, GC D12, etc., is about reducing the overhead of the state uh, render state changes. And 
So in this idea, I hope that state change will happen. So basically, uh, you have a list of states that application sets individually, but in reality, they are updated by group. So every time you update one state, it's going uh, one entire group is going to be uploaded again on the GPU. And so applications uh, are intended to developers, and they uh, know which uh, state changes are done actually in group, and so they optimize so that two groups are updated. Good hack. And uh, so what we do in line is simply to uh, implement this group. Uh, when you update one state uh, at the broker time, you will update one group because uh, state changes, and it's stated in the documentation, uh, must be committed only uh, at every draw call. So when you call a draw committed, uh, then it's the time that everything is going to be sent to duplicate group. And so uh, about JPEGs and pixel shaders, so uh, when you play a game on the uh, wine, you are going to be a, a bit frustrated because of the date compilation issue that Stefan mentioned, but uh, sometimes in the middle of your game, the game is going to be stuck for almost one second because it's going to compile shaders. Because uh, for wine, uh, the shaders are compiled at uh, draw call time, so the first time they are used. Uh, so we don't have that problem because we compile the shaders directly when the application has to compile them. So everything is compiled at the correct moment. So um, with a, a small exception, uh, when you render from a, a depth texture, w um, sometimes the app can read the depth uh, state, uh, what was rendered, uh, the depth buffer. And, and this needs special code in the shader, so we have to recompile in this, this case, but it's the only one. So it works, but uh, translation uh, from this CD9 uh, I scale scale code is uh, easy because uh, all applications are going to give us a pre-compiled code. So optimization has already been done. And so basically here is the beginning of a shader. And so here it declares input, here it declares output. So here it says that it's going to output texture coordinates but only two components. Above you have a definition of one percent. And so one complex thing is about mapping these outputs to the inputs of the pixel shader and how to map these inputs to what we, we receive. And so I, I think the idea beh behind the OpenGL API to uh, compile a pixel and a fragment and JPEG shaders at the link them together is to optimize uh, the mapping between the output and the input, but we don't have that in this CD9. Hopefully it's easy to implement in the DM API. So we just declare input and we remember for which two blades they were and when we uh, map uh, the vertex uh, data, uh, we just map the usage declared by the application. So that part is pretty straightforward. For that, for every usage position, we are going to map uh, generic uh, times index uh, usage. So every usage here, text code one, etc., is going to be mapped to a fixed generic index. And so that means that one vertex shader can be used with a lot of pixel shader without recompiling, which I think we need recompiling in line. So that's uh, how uh, one pixel shader could look like there. So for the inside code of a shader, uh, this looks like that. And everything can be translated quite easily uh, in CJ5, um, except some small exceptions, where, for example, uh, we're supposed to call a square root. Um, the DCD9 application are expecting sometimes that it can't because old hardware were behaving like that. And so we have to add instructions to do this mapping. Hopefully the, the Gallium driver is going to optimize this to 
remove it when they have a input and that is a ground pin. And so Y is doing the same. I think it's for RCP. So to repeat the command, uh, basically some uh, games are expecting some uh, infinite sometimes, uh, but I think it's clever because infinites are translated to not a number uh, at the pixel space. So I if you look uh, at the AMD uh, uh, internal pseudo code, uh, you will see that the uh, assembly has some specific instruction for f uh, having a clumped version of this one and a decree denied version that does not do clumping, but when it's infinite, it said it could zero. So it's harder to implement for it. And so since this version works better, we prefer, uh, works fast, we prefer this one, but if it's needed, we are going to implement the clumping dash zero does that. So mapping buffer format is extremely easy uh, with Gagam. We we just have to inverse the order compared to what the application is asking. So here, for example, it's good this way. And so, conclusion of this part. Everything decree denied is easy to implement, basically, uh, in Gagam. So why not implement it? Because basically, if it's easy, it means that you are going to have a an extremely low overhead. Whereas if you have to go through OpenGL, when sometimes the mapping is not straightforward, so you would have to have more offsets or things like that that would ha add CPU overhead. So we, 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 we can do a lot of assumptions that can make it straightforward uh, for drivers to implement DCD9. However, uh, our implementation is not busty at all. Actually, more uh, games are working on Y currently, but we have games that work on nine, not on Y. And, and this is due because of the same difficulty, basically, that Y developers is that a lot of things are not documented. So, for example, what should happen when the application is rendering to a, a render buffer, but uh, render target, but the dev buffer is too small? Or what should happen when um, the render target is defined to be null. So if we, it is a special format uh, uh, that was implemented to say no things. So basically the application wants to render to a dead buffer, but um, there, there, there were some strange behaviors that uh, usually you have to take into account only the rendering size of the uh, render target, but it for this specific format, you don't have to. So we discovered that when um, playing things in our code, and we think that Wine is not implementing that, so that's why probably it has broken shadows in a lot of games. So I have told Wine developers to investigate this, and perhaps bro broken shadows are not going to be broken anymore in Wine. Uh, also, state blocks uh, are very hard to implement for us. State blocks are basically record all states and um, record, uh, save all states and restore them. But uh, sometimes uh, uh, some parts of the API are just record only a subset of state, uh, etc., and it's difficult to implement in a fast, a reliable, and efficient way. So about CPU overhead, currently we have very low CPU overhead, but uh, we think it can be much better. We have uh, some optimization missing, and uh, basically, the, the optimizations uh, to do this much faster are not done. For example, um, when a subset of a group uh, state is changed, we are going to uh, fill all the structure again with all uh, the decree denying states. Uh, for example, this could be done faster by having already the structure prepared and only change one field. Uh, there's a lot of 
or small things like that and redundant state changes that could even more reduce overhead. So now, uh, performance. So uh, I have two test configuration to, to show you. So the first one is my laptop. So I, I didn't have time to do a lot of precise uh, static be benchmarking. Uh, so uh, my laptop has a, an Intel Core, which is a good CPU and uh, a lower end uh, mobile card, which uh, the slowest VPN card. So uh, I'm going to be VPN limited. Uh, so I tried on the Windows 7, Ubuntu, as not to mention, and Arch Linux, uh, which is my uh, testing configuration. And basically, uh, this is our branch with uh, nine patches, the last one. Uh, this is uh, some Radeon HP uh, op optimizations that have landed two days ago, but they didn't land it at the time uh, I did the benchmark. And uh, DMI copy is that uh, for derived from systems, uh, you have to do a copy from tiling buffer to linear buffer, and that can be done natively by the hardware without using the graphic enzyme. That's called DMA copy. But since some people uh, had some issues with deadlock with that and that it wasn't solved, the method developer uh, disabled it uh, six months ago or a little more. So I re enabled it for, for me because it gave me five percent boost and it works perfectly. And so I tested Portal. And so yes, uh, the MD card on the Windows, we, we would expect that if you have a secondary card, it would perform much better than the integrated one. So it's not always the case for all games. For, for example, for Skyrim, it's two times faster, but for Portal, apparently not. And so we see that with nine, we, we are able to match almost the Windows performance and uh, the frame rate is not too different. Uh, with Wine, however, uh, we have a performance similar to the native DS10. And but Intel is uh, improving quite well, but not as good as the Windows driver. I, I think perhaps the Windows driver has essentially been optimized for that game. So that would explain the red dots. And as for Skyrim, uh, I didn't do precise benchmarking, but basically I get uh, three quarters of the Windows performance with nine and 50% with one. So now the second testing configuration is much more testing. Uh, I didn't do the test uh, that, we are that we are provided by one of our testers. And so um, this is a more CPU limited scenario. It's not using a laptop. And the CPU is on performance, so we can rely on the CPU percentage. So um, here is the Gaian HUD that shows uh, the frame rate and the CPU usage uh, when you play the game. And so on the nine for this particular game, we see that we have uh, some, something much smoother for the CPU usage and lower and much higher FPS uh, than Wine. And so we have also compared to Wine 270, which is a common theme optimization that does all the CPU overhead in one thread. So basically, here too, we have lower CPU usage and better performance. We, I have also the game here. So this is a particular example where we are uh, slower than wine. So I think this is due to some missing optimizations that uh, this game is really uh, relying on. So we have very, very few of them, but it happens. And this is with wine 270. Uh, so for, for Return of Dream of 2, we, we have much better performance. So I don't know why in particular for a 1022 game we get much better or, or not. It's, it's still a, a mystery what exactly the game is relying on to be fast. Uh, but basically, um, we have much smoother CPU usage. And so we see here it's CPU limited because one core is at 100%. And for CSMT, uh, for CMCMT, I was told that it's normal that one CPU is at 100% because the, the main thread that is not doing the rounding is busy waiting. 
So that's why one to two will always be as less than two from two. And so here too, uh, we have the potential error. So another game where we have uh, trivial performances. And so this game too is super limited. And even with a much higher frame rate, frame rate we will have much high lower CPU overhead. So that's the situation too. So here you see the two threads at one hundred percent. So the main thread they kill, and the main thread they they mill it. Uh, with Skyrim. So uh, also for Skyrim, um, we we have a lot of people saying that Day and Nine is a really big game for for playing in different distance because every time a new object is appearing uh, on the wine, a, a, a shader is going to be compiled. So you see a monster and then you are blocked, whereas they can happen and do not die. So with Fusion 2. So I was a bit faster and I wanted to go soon. So the conclusion of this benchmark is obviously that it works on, on a lot of games, uh, a bit less than wine, but we are working on it. Uh, yet when it works, it's usually faster. It can be improved even more, as I said earlier, we. We can improve CPU overhead even more, and usually we don't have that much CPU overhead compared to wine. So our plans: uh, we we don't want uh, to be fighting wine. Actually, we oh everyone would be happy with uh, very po powerful wine. Uh, so we for some people are asking us: uh, Would you like to do a DCD11 new state tracker? And I, I always say no. Uh, what I want is a well fast wine. Um, so please, wine developers and other uh, graphic developers, try find solutions, jail extension, I don't know anything that could improve situation so that we don't have to write another state tracker, and that wine would be the best solution for everyone. That's one. That's why everyone uh, wants. But since it's a long process, we expect that in uh, the next two years, if if we use Galileo 9, we are going to get uh, better performance. So uh, what? Uh, so currently, 9 is available on the last uh, stable Nova version, and we are putting a lot of new fixing on it so that uh, some more games are working. And we we have now Play on Linux support because. Uh, since the wine part is not upstream, um, people would have to compile themselves themselves wine. It's not very handy. So Play on Linux allows to install directly a compiled version, so it's much easier for users. And also, we are planning on uh, wise wine staging integration. So they, they told us what they would like with Hans in our code to to be able to integrate it to wine staging. So it would probably be done in the near future. So thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Yes? The question was about uh, the enable functions. So unfortunately, yes, we we have to uh, to have the enable functions to have something perfectly synchronized. But for now, you you can use uh, an enable thread for do for doing the presentation. I said. Other questions? Yes. Yes. 
the question was about multi GPU. Yes, it's only for Optimus like systems, not for uh, rendering at the same time on two graphic cards. So it can be asked. Other questions? So uh, the question was about <laughs> so the question about was about wine and nine color tracing together uh, to to get one path very fast. So uh, actually, we do cooperate for bug uh, tracking. So we do have different set of bugs, and so when we know why probability of a version is buggy, we can talk to the others. So every time uh, I explain something very strange in how application behave, uh, I go ask if Stefan what he thinks about it. And so sometimes he has the answer. And on the other hand, when I think something is buggy in wine and that we don't have a problem, I can wait for it. I think OpenGL is very tricky to get uh, perfect performance. I think the meta developers are really doing hard work on it, but it's probably need more manpower. <laughs> because it's too complicated. It's much easier to do this with nine. As I said, it's extremely <laughs> fast. <laughs> As I said, everything is easy there. Like which functionality? <laughs> so uh, fixed function pipeline uh, um, needs. So it basically, it's uh, some some um, fixed function that needs to be translated to VLSL or to GSI. So we don't have at all the same code uh, in nine and wine for that, and that's why we don't have the same behavior too. Yeah, so So it's difficult to share it. Even so, it could be done if if we really wanted to. But basically, when both get something working, what why should we hold stuff? Yes. So the question was about integrating with wine staging, how uh, we could do, do it the better way. Uh, so uh, basically what we do currently in wine is not perfect. We, we don't find it very clean. We, we didn't even do pull request because we know it's not very clean. The leather part is clean, but not the wine part. And so uh, one staging developer went to see us and say that they would be willing uh, to integrate our code but that they wanted it uh, to be slightly changed. They wanted to know if it was possible uh, so that we treat better uh, how they work and how they work with CSMP because they provide CSMP and non-CSMP. And so basically we are going to do the same way, just a uh, matter of putting code in another file and doing compilation slightly differently. It's not going to be too complicated and that's what we will uh, do in Cayenne Linux too. Yes. 
So the comments was about uh, the internal API between Y and I, uh, about the stability. So uh, we had a lot of work to make it stable uh, and pretty solid before merging into Nova. And but we can support extension to it. So uh, basically the idea is that if we need to do uh, a very few things that we can't do with the current uh, API, which, which I, we have one example that application won't use, but that only way to do that could be do things differently. I think this, this could be some, when things are totally stable, we can implement the the better way, which is to compile the Galleon line with Wine compiler, so that it gets aware about memory allocation and that we have access directly to the function without internal API. But that's probably going to be done when everything is correct. There was a question there? With mono? So the question is, uh, what about uh, integrating Galleon line to Mono? So uh, actually, I, I don't know a lot about Mono code. So I don't know how much it would be possible if it's uh, what uh, we would want. Uh, does Mono really have GCD9 applications that would be willing to? Apparently, very few applications would benefit it, but obviously you would like to have perfect support for everything. But sometimes we have to make work, and when almost an application does something, perhaps we shouldn't spend too much on it. Other questions? Okay, so thank you for your attention.